everyone, welcome to Rail Works. My name is James, and today we're doing another locomotive review. This time we're looking at the EFE Rail J94 locomotive. It looks a rather nice little tank engine. But first of all, let's get all the boring stuff away so you can live over there. So the product code is, when it's in focus, E85502 J94 saddle tank with the running number 68043 in BR black with early emblem, and it is DCC6. Compatible. Uh, since this is my first uh, EFE rail um, locomotive review, I do have to say that the box is, well, it's, um, yes, it's a bit big for just a tiny little tank engine, but uh, oh well, it does the job. It is a bit boring, but uh, like I said, it does the job, so I can't really complain. So I'll pop you over there. Uh, inside the pack, we have the Owner's information sheet, which has also got the warranty on the back page, which uh, oh, and also exploded diagram, but uh, we won't look at this because it's all boring. But uh, yes, let's have a look at the information sheet. So we have the well, it has welcome, it has running in, which is uh, probably about an hour each way it normally recommends, but 30 minutes will normally do. So this is a cordless motor, which is always good to see. So it's a six pin micro DCC uh, decoder. Uh, I can't really see, I can see the decoder, it's inside, but uh, I can't see much difference from the outset. Cleaning maintenance is basically, let me have a quick read this way. Uh, cleaning maintenance, it's basically uh, oil, the usual spots, basically any moving bits. Let me just get something to point with. So just oil, these bits here, and the opposite side, and also a little bit of oil on the gear just there, and that will be all you need to do. And uh, yeah, it does mention taking care of your track as well, but uh, otherwise it's all the usual stuff. On the inside, it does say about storage, basically put somewhere uh, out, basically not wet and out way. <laughs> and DCC decoder fitting. Uh, let's see, it's the inside the loco cab. You remove two screws at the back, which removes cab which you need to gently remove uh gently which uh, reveals the blanking plate oh it's one of them type that's what it looks like it's uh, the same type which are in a dapo locomotive so it's a very small decoder so you won't be able to use most standard size decoders you have to get very small ones and then a six pin decoder inside and then replace the cab and again warranty won't read and exploded diagram always useful on the back it is missing in the current Faris loc uh, locomotive uh, information sheet, but never mind. And here we have the, uh, what is it, the extras, the detail pieces, that's the word I needed. So we've got uh, some fake little free link couplings there, some uh, you know, vacuum piping and stuff like that, and a few other little bits of pipe. Little bits and pieces which I won't actually bother to fit. Anyway, let's have a look at how much it weighs. So that is zeroed out. And it is 27.5 grams. So it's a touch over a Mark 1 coat. It does actually pop you that way. It does actually feel about right for how much it weighs in the hand. You can tell there is a bit of weight. So it does have the amount of weight in it, but the body is plastic. So you can definitely tell that is actually maybe a bit. No, 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 that's definitely plastic. Yeah. So cab is plastic, body is plastic. The running plate, however, that may be plastic, but there is metal sashi in there somewhere. It's fairly cold, but uh, let's have a look at the detail. First of all, uh, let's go on to the bottom. Uh, no tracks and tires, always good to see. Brake rodding, very nice to see. Uh, let's see, it has got NEM pockets either end. It's got these very nicely coloured out uh, piping. Not, uh, is it separately fitted? It's probably separately fitted. Let's have a look here. I'll probably should turn on that light. There we go. <laughs> uh, let's see, tampo printing is nice and legible. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's probably about average. Yep, yeah, that's fine. Uh, the uh, 
whistle and say I'm assuming that's what a safety valve is. That looks quite nice. It's painted out. It is part of the moulding. Handrails everywhere. Which, which are definitely separate fitted, uh, fitted and are quite stiff and not likely to warp. That's the printing on the front as well. And we have got riveting on the buffer beam. Very nice. Uh, unfortunately, I have only got the uh, I have got the one which is in the most boring livery because you can get in there uh, was it National Coal Board, a couple of industrial liveries as well, which are quite fancy and flashy and stuff like that. But I got it in BR black. Uh, sadly, none in what was it LMR blue. It's a bit sad to see. Hopefully, they do bring that out at some point, but uh, no, not at the moment. Coal is a bit basic, but again, you've only got a very small bit to work with. We have got some grills on the back windows. It's nice to see, and also glazing on the front windows and glazing on the back windows. Inside, however, you do have a lot of detail, which is very difficult to see. Uh, you'll be able to see better on the close-up when you get around there. Uh, you do have a lot of detail inside the cab. Very nice to see. Again, you won't be able to see all that well on the camera at the moment, but uh, you will when it's on the turntable. And uh, you can see clearly underneath the boiler. The gearing, well, first of all, the motor is right inside the axle boiler. And the gears, which link up to the axle drive wheels, are uh, in the uh, firebox. This is a nice use of space. So it does actually look the part. I'm very impressed with that. And you have got the reverse gear, uh, the reverse, can't do my words at the moment. The uh, reverse lever down here as well. Yeah, very nice to see. Riveting as well on the back as well. Yeah, that's got a fair amount of detail. Even though delivery is very basic, uh, I would assume that the livery on the more colourful ones look much more better. We've also got the uh, filler cap up here, very nice. And uh, a non-functioning uh, vent here. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I assume I said the livery on the more colourful ones are crisp and clean as well. And you have got silvered uh, coupling rods at the bottom there. And you have got a fake cup, uh, coupling hook there. And one at the back, and also some, what's it, um, lamp irons as well, and some very durable ones on the front as well. There's also a screw inside here, but I'll assume that's meant to be there. <laughs> yeah, very best of that. Yeah, it's a very nicely detailed model for its size. And uh, yeah, it does also have different wheel spacing to the usual uh, Faris 060s. Yeah, very impressed with how this turned out. Let's see, is there any... There's a little bit of detail underneath the... Uh, underneath the boiler, but uh, you can't quite see underneath there, so it wouldn't surprise me if they've left that off. But still, it looks nice. Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling on and get it onto my turntable so you can see the interior detail a lot more better. And um, yeah, then I'll tell you a bit more about the uh, prototype. So I'll see you in a bit. The Hunsett Austerity 060 saddle tank is a class of steam locomotive designed by the Hunsett Engine Company for shunting. The class became the standard British shunting locomotive during the Second World War and production continued until 1964 at various locomotive manufacturers. The 48 150 class were built for, for the guest Akeen. Goldwyn's Iron and Steel Company in 1937, being an enlarged version of a design dating from 1923. These developed into the 50550 class of 1941-1942 with various modifications. At the outbreak of the Second World War, the War Department had initially chosen the LMS Jinty as its standard shunting locomotive, but was persuaded by Hunsett that a simplified version of a more modern 50550 design would be more suitable. The first locomotive was completed at the Leeds Works at the start of 1943. After D-Day, they were used on continental Europe and in North Africa, 
as well as at docks and military sites in Britain. A total of 377 had been built for the War Department by 1947, with two further engines having been built for collieries. As the final War Department locomotives were being delivered, the National Coal Board was placing orders for identical locomotives to be used at the collieries. Between 1948 and 1964, 77 new austerity locomotives were built for the National Coal Board, and a further 14 engines were ordered in 1952 by the British Army to supplement its fleet of existing engines. The Lenier had trials with one engine in November 1945, and then bought 75 of them in 1946 and classified them as J94s. 70 austerities, sometimes referred to as buckets, have been preserved on heritage railways, many in working order. And several of these engines have been painted as Elinear J94s to represent mainline engines rather than industrial use engines. However, only two of the original Elinear J94s have been preserved. Right, here we are, the J94 now mill out. I have also got a test rake of eight Mark 1 coaches ready for it to pull round. First of all, let's see how well it runs under slow speed. And let me just get over it. There we go. Right, also have to mention this is under DC, so it may operate slightly differently under DCC if you do decide to uh, chip your engine. So let me just slowly raise it up till it starts moving. That's a, that's a rather nice crawl, that one. Let me see if I can do the same in reverse. That's a very nice cool up. I did also give my track a nice good clean before operate, uh, running the engine, so hopefully this is the best I can do. <laughs> yeah, that's quite nice. I don't think I can get much slower than that, but it doesn't seem to have any cogging or any other issues. Yeah, very happy with that. Anyway, let's give it a nice run round. So, let's turn it up a little bit more. Hopefully it doesn't get caught back there, because uh, there's a slight bit of issue back there, but... Uh... Yeah, but it seems happy. There we go. <laughs> anyway, just to mention the price, I got this from Rose of Sheffield for £106.20, if I remember right. It isn't too bad. It seems to be quite happy running around while out. Yeah. Very happy with that. Right, now onto the other track. I would use the uh, points, but uh, this is actually a lot faster. So let me just make sure. Yep, you seem happy. And then line you up. Yeah, very nice run around on its own. But now onto the haulage test. So let me just, uh, there we go. So. The J94 that weighs 27.5 grams, so just a touch over a single Mark 1 coach, which weighs 25 grams. So I'd say this is just under 8 times the weight of the J94. So let's see how well it will couple up. Uh, is that the right direction? No, it isn't. So here we go. Make sure the camera's pointing the right way. Hmm. Oh, yep, that seems fine. Right, so let's see how well it runs. Well, it's moving. On the flat, it has no issues with eight. Ooh, little bit of stutter there. Right, let's see if, see for any slowdown. Oh, there's a bit of slow down there. Oh, and it's got past it. But it is struggling. <laughs> but it's getting there. <laughs> so yeah. 
up a very slight incline. I think eight coaches is a bit much for the J94. But considering that that is eight times its own weight, I'd be very surprised if it did more than, no, that much. So let's see. I think one of the coaches are getting caught on something. So let me just pull you to here. Uh, I'm going to remove two. Right. Send you off in its way. Ooh, and a little bit of storage there. There we go. I'll try and get these ones off. Yeah, that seems much better, that one. So I'm going to say six coats is probably the max it can do. And here we go. Yeah, that's turned out quite nicely. Uh, actually, let me just put it up a little bit further. There we go. Now we can get a better look at it. Yeah. Six coaches for a engine of 27.5 grams. So it's not too bad, really. And yeah, still looks rather nice long train. But it'll be primarily pulling freight and things like that. So it'll look at a lot, well, pretty much a lot more better than this one. <laughs> Yeah, very nice engine. That's it. Has got a fair amount of detail, which is quite nice to see. It's, uh, it could be heavier, but uh, still, it's a nice, decent weight, and it does have a nice amount of haulage. And uh, yeah, it's, I say, it runs rather nicely, and it's not really that expensive in my opinion. It's only a hundred, well, it's hundred and six pound twenty, if I remember right. So yeah. Reasonably priced, really. Considering that uh, the LMS Trinity is about the same price, really. I think that's about 110 to 100, something like that. So, yeah, it's about spot on price. Ooh, make sure the camera's in the right position. But, uh, yeah. The only thing which I can say is I really wish it was in a, in a LMR livery, then I'd <laughs> be quite happy. But, uh, yeah. And so, the only downsides I can think of is. Just really, it just needs a bit more weight, really. But other than that, I'm quite happy with this engine. But uh, yeah, do let me know what you think in the comments. But that's going to be it for me. So if you do like the J94, do let you know. Do feel free to put it down in the comments. And if you do like the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. But if you didn't like the video, uh, well, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. But that's going to be it for me and the J94. So. Let me just get over to the control and I'll send it off on its way. So take care now. Bye bye. Let's go to a round the corner. <laughs>